everyone, this is Brian from actamelody.com. Well, this week we're going to be taking a look at an Eric Clapton-inspired lead that's played between the major pentatonic scale and the minor pentatonic scale. So you will bounce back and forth between those two scales. And I'll explain what all that means in the lesson. Um, this is played over a gospel, bluesy-sounding jam track, which is just a lot of fun to play over because it allows you to pretty seamlessly go between those two scales. And no matter what you're going to play, it's going to sound pretty good. So... Um, so anyway, we'll cover all that. If you're a premium member and you want to download the uh, the jam track so that you can practice along, uh, the tablature, which will be available, as well as the part two video, you can get all of that at activemelody.com. Just look for EP074. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first half. Okay, so this is played in the key of C. And uh, the first three chords in this are the C. Then it goes to a G augmented chord. And then back to a C. And all this, the chords are going to be listed out in the tablature. So if you've got that, you'll be able to see what the, the chords are and where the solo fits into those chords. But um, So if we're playing in the key of C, as I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be going back and forth between the major pentatonic scale and the minor pentatonic scale. We actually start the solo off in the major. But let me just show you where our boundaries are real quick before we get into the notes. And then we'll I'll show you the note, everything note for note. So uh, this is how I think of it. I always want to find my root fret if I'm going to start a solo. So if we're playing the key of C, I think where's the where's the uh, the bar chord for C, which would be here. So that's just a major bar chord, and um, and wherever I put my bar, and it happens to be the eighth fret in this case, that's home base. So that's my that's my root fret in this scenario. And here's what I mean by that. If I'm going to play the minor pentatonic scale pattern one. There's five patterns in the minor pentatonic scale, and uh, and I cover all of those in the blues lead course at ActiveMelody.com, and so you premium members have access to that if you need to go back and watch it as a refresher. But here are the notes in pattern one. That's for uh, the key of C. So that's any of those notes are going to sound with with the chord in the background. It's going to sound kind of bluesy. So if I if I take those that same pattern. And I shift everything down three frets, one, two, three, down here, and play those same notes, or same same pattern rather. That is the major pentatonic scale. So that will also work in the key of C, any of those notes, but they're going to give it a happier sound. So if you want it to sound kind of sad or bluesy, you're going to play up here. If you want it to sound kind of... Um, a little more happy or upbeat, you're going to play down here. Um, now that's just a general rule of thumb and that works for any of those patterns. So if that's, that's pattern one, you could apply that to pattern two. You just always want to, wherever you're playing pattern two, which would be here, you're going to want to shift it down three frets. So one, two, three. And you can see how it still works in the key of C if you think of that chord in the background, it's just going to have a happier sound to it. Okay, so that's kind of the parameters that we're playing within. So I start off in the major pentatonic scale. And um, that's the first thing that I play. And you can see so that, that note right there, that's the first note that I played, and you see where it's at. And you see why it works, because it's in that major pentatonic scale pattern one. So what I did was, a, it's a fifth fret, fourth string. I played it twice. Then I hammered on to the 7th fret 4th string. Then I came up here and played the 5th fret 3rd string. And you can see all of those are right in line with that major pentatonic scale. Now I'm going to show you a little twist to the whole thing. Um, it's, it's a little one, but it's a, it's a good one because um, this kind of pieces it all together, really. So the next thing that I play is this. what it is. So I come up here to the 5th fret 2nd string, still part of the major pentatonic scale, but then I play the 6th fret 2nd string. Now some of you are going, well, hang on, that wasn't in the major pentatonic scale, and you're right. So the pentatonic scale, penta means 5, the pentatonic scale is only 5 notes in a scale. But the major scale itself uh, has uh, 2 extra notes. So the way that I think of the major scale, uh, so the pen is, to the the pentatonic scale, the major pentatonic, is just a pared down version. All of those notes are also in the major scale. You just have a few less. That that's just 
that's the way to think. It's a little thriftier. You have to, you know, you don't have as many to work with. But if you think of do re mi fa sol la ti do, that's the major scale for the key of C. So there's two extra notes. So if we were to start it up here, there's one and there's two. So you can see that note. So that, when I play the 6th fret 2nd string, that's why that note works, because it's technically in the major scale. So to simplify it, uh, just as an example, i just show you how to take the minor pentatonic scale and slide it down uh, 3 frets. And that's true, that is the major pentatonic scale, but you can add those extra two notes. And you can have the full major scale. So just, you know, you can play it by ear, because you can, should be able to pick out Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do uh, in, uh, as, you, as you play. Um, just by ear, and then you can start applying those and kind of coming up with your own licks. But that's where that lick comes from. All right, so let's back it up. We have... Then the second thing... So that's just a full bend there, and I'm using my middle finger for that. Second fret... Uh, I'm sorry, sixth fret second string. Once I hit the peak of the bend, I release it... And then I come down and play the 5th fret 3rd string. So watch. So your natural tendency is going to be to come down there. But I actually kind of skipped that. I went and landed on the 5th fret 3rd string. Okay? The next thing I played was... So what we have here is I'm coming up to the 8th fret 2nd string, and I'm going to do a full bend, and I use my ring finger for that. In fact, I use both of these fingers for that bend. You get more leverage when you use two fingers. So it's a full bend there. I come down to the 8th fret 2nd string. Now I'm playing the 6th fret 2nd string. There's that note again that we introduced. Now I'm going to come down with my middle finger, uh, and hopefully this will allow you to see why these notes are, you can visualize, think of like an acetate overlay of that scale. You can see why these notes are working. Then I come down to the 7th fret 3rd string, do another full bend. Actually it's a pre, it's what you call a pre-bend, so it's a, it's a full bend, a full bend means you're going to bend hit the f note that's two frets higher from where you started. See, I'm hitting that by doing a bend. So as soon as I hit the note, I bend it. It's already bent into place, and then I just release it like that. See? Then I come down to the seventh fret third string. Uh, I'm sorry, the fifth fret third string then the 7th fret 4th string, then I do this little hammer on between the 5th fret and the 7th fret on the 3rd string. See it? There's the hammer on. Let me back up and play just that bend part again. So we have... Um, Alright, let's back up. We'll play the whole thing up to this point. So we have... Now your challenge in that, if you're new to bending, is you're going to be, it's going to feel clunky and you're going to be hitting strings that you don't want to hit. And all that just comes with control and practice. So you could spend a lot of time if you really want to get into bending with just what you learned there. There's a lot of bending techniques. Um, if you can get that down and, and make it sound, uh, you know, sound, sound good, that'll be something you can use. Uh, really, you can apply to any types of bends that you need uh, going forward. So the next thing that I played was and that little lick comes from um, uh, all, the, all of these are uh, derivations of something Clapton has done but this one in particular comes from Hard Times on the Journeyman album. That's one of my favorite songs, favorite solos that he's ever done I think because it's just so smooth. It's got a little bit of jazz, he's playing a big hollow body Gibson and it just sounds so cool. But that's where this look comes from. 
So here's how I'm doing it. I'm starting with my ring finger on the 5th fret 4th string, slotting up to the 7th fret 4th string, then 5th fret 3rd string, 7th fret 3rd string. So let me, let's me let back up and play that. Pretty easy so far, right? Now it sounds like it gets really fast, but you'll see what I'm doing is not that difficult. I, I, by the way, I don't do anything that's very difficult. I'm not, my fingers are not, I don't have, I can't do any of the Eddie Van Halen stuff or any of that. So, uh, so anything that I do, I'll be able to, sh you should be able to do too. It just takes a little practice, but. So, here's what we're gonna learn how to do. So watch this, I'm, I'm on the seventh fret third string and it's just, uh, I pick it, slide into place, slide back into place, and then I do a pull off. You can see I'm just picking that once, watch. I don't know if you consider that a, a pull off or a hammer on to that fifth fret third string, but it's, that's the note to play. All of those notes are on the third string, so it's seventh, eighth, seventh, fifth, and then, it, then I come down and play the seventh fret fourth string. All right, so let's back up. So after I come down and play the seventh fret fourth string, what I, what I do is I kind of naturally just bar that so that I, I can play the fourth string and the third string both on that same fret. And then I can come back and play the fourth string on the on the seventh fret. So it's really those three notes. You're playing fourth string, third string, fourth string, all on the seventh fret. And then I land on the fifth fret third string. Hear that? And once you can kind of put it together and make it sound smooth, uh, it won't happen right away, but just practice it slowly. Uh, but that's what it'll sound like. Okay, so from the start. We come up and go. So let me show you that. That's that goes into a little bit of a jazzy thing, but um, but I thought it worked. Not sure where that came from, but so I come up here to the uh, this is the the ninth fret on the third string, and I slide into that. I love sliding into to notes. It just gives it a a, a whole different character, and Clapton does that a lot. Then I come up and play the 8th fret 2nd string. Now I'm going to hammer on between the 8th fret and the 10th fret on the 2nd string. And then I'm going to land on the 8th fret 2nd string. So all together. Now let's think about where we're at from a scales perspective once we're up in this range. This is interesting. So remember we had the pen major pentatonic scale. Pattern 1, right? Well pattern 2 right here. So we're in the major pentatonic scale, pattern two. And it still has kind of a happy sound up to this point. Then I went, and I slid up, that's the 12th fret second string. And for that I'm going, uh, I'm backing off there between the 10th fret and the second, I'm sorry, the 10th fret and the 8th fret on the second string. Slide up, slide up again to the 12th fret 2nd string. Okay, so then I come up here and play this. So let's learn that. I'm doing a, I'm starting in the 10th fret 2nd string and I'm doing a half bend. Now, remember I said a minute ago, a, a whole bend is when you do a, uh, you try and match the note that's two frets higher than from where you start. A half bend is when you match the note that's one fret. So there's the note we're trying to match. 
So that, you just have to do, the, do that with your ear. But So you're going to do a bend, a release, play the 8th fret 2nd string, then we're going to come down to the 10th fret 3rd string, uh, then we're going to go back to the 2nd string and we're going to do a hammer on between the 8th fret and the 10th fret, and then we're going to land on the 8th fret 2nd string. So let's put that together slowly. We have. Okay, and then after that, then I went. And so for that, I'm playing, um, I'm using my uh, ring finger on the uh, 10th fret third string. So I kind of put both of those down at the same time. So um, 10th fret third string, 8th fret 2nd string, and you can see it causes a little bit of a clash, but when you play through it quickly, it sounds kind of cool. So th those are the first two notes. Then I come down and do this um, this little blues run, and I use this all the time. So this is totally uh, Eric Clapton. He uses this uh, this little thing all the time, all the way back to Cream, Yardbirds, I mean, you listen to anything in his career and he's using this lick. So um, so here's how you do it. It's on the, we're going to start here on the 10th fret 3rd string, then we're, so we're going to do a full bend, then we're going to play just the 10th fret 1st string without the bend, 8th fret 3rd string, now here's where we do that little bar, so I'm going to put the bar down on the 10th fret and I'm going to play strings 4, 3, 4. So we have... Let's just get that so far. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, one, 5, 6. Those first six notes. So just try and get that down. Then after that, then we play. So that's just to reinforce that note, I guess, but it's coming down to the 8th fret 3rd string, and then we're going to play the 10th fret 4th string, and we're going to play that twice. Alright, so let's back up. So we have... And that's where we're at thus far. Just remember that it starts with those two notes. All right, let me back up and play the whole thing up to this point, and then we'll move on to the last little lick. So we have. And then the last little run I do, which is pretty fast, it goes... But it's, it's fast, but it's actually pretty easy because it's just really some pull-offs and hammer-ons. So here's how we do that. And this is a cream lick. Love that. Um, start by barring... Oh, one other thing to show you before we get into this, and this, is, this lick is part of this. So you remember when we, we just learned... We went from that major pentatonic scale. This is a kind of a cool little place where the two scales overlap. But we went from sounding kind of happy to this. And you can see what's happening is where this major pentatonic scale pattern two. Now just remember, we started with pattern one here. Pattern two is here. But remember where minor pentatonic scale pattern one is, is here. So the, that pattern two lives right here, but pattern pattern two of the major pentatonic scale lives here, but pattern one of the minor pentatonic scale lives here. So the two scales live within each other right in this one little area. And I always kind of refer to that as the sweet spot where you can do a lot of those Freddie King. 
that's how, that's why they work is because you're quickly sh um, going back and forth between minor pentatonic scale and major. So that's we started off in the major when we went, uh, but then when once we came into, you can tell it sounds bluesy, and so you're back into the minor pentatonic scale. But now you know why. Okay, so here's the little cream lick. So it starts by barring the first three strings on the eighth fret, and then we're going to go to string three, and then we're going to play. I'm going to use my middle finger to come down on the uh, ninth fret third string. Then, so we're going to play these two notes on the third string. So that's fret eight, fret nine. Then we're going to play fret eight second string. Then we're going to play fret eight. Uh, or sorry. Fret 10 second string. Notice this bar stays down the whole time. That's important. Then we're going to play string uh, fret 8 string 1. So those are your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. First five notes. And what I'm doing with my right hand, I'm just kind of alternate picking on I'm, in fact I'm alternate picking really all of this um, the right hand if you ever uh, w are wondering what I'm doing I'm really if I'm not doing a pull off or something I'm playing you know down up down up so after you play those five notes which are pretty straightforward when you play that uh, eighth fret first string then you're gonna go now watch what's happening here. See the bar stays down. I come down and play the 10th fret 2nd string, which I've already played. But as soon as I play it, I do a pull off. And then I do a hammer on to the uh, 10th fret 3rd string. See what I'm doing? Picking it once. Then we're back to the 8th fret 2nd string. And then after I play the 8th fret 2nd string, I'm going to play the 8th fret 3rd string. And when I play that, I pull it so that it goes slightly sharp. It gives it kind of a nice bluesy feel. And then I come down and I land on the 10th uh, fret 4th string. There's that little leg, that little cream leg. And then to, to close out that first half, I went. And so that's just again how we started that leg. So this time I'm doing a hammer on. So it's eighth fret, third string, hammering on to the ninth fret, third string. Then we're going to play the eighth fret, second string. And then I kind of let it pause for a second, then I went and gave it a little vibrato for the turnaround, which would be that seventh chord. This, or, uh, so. so, and then I go right into part two. Now, part two is for premium members, uh, but uh, go check that out if you haven't. Uh, just go to activemelody.com, look for EP074. That's the lesson number for this. All right, let me back up and I'll play through everything that we just learned in this, and uh, and we'll be done with part one. So here we go. So that's all we have for the first half. I'll see you in part two.